What's up guys, welcome to my ArrayList tutorial and this time I'm going to show you how to implement a fully fledged ArrayList from scratch using recursion and last time I showed you how to do a linked list, this time I'm going to show you how to do an ArrayList. And just like last time, we're going to do an abstract data type, so T, alright. This time it's going to hold an array, so I'm going to make a public final int and we're going to call this the default size, okay? So an array list is going to have a default size of 10. We're going to have a final int, or sorry, private int size. We're going to have a size. And we're going to have the array itself. So private t array. All right. And now we make the constructor. So And we're gonna say this dot array equals we're gonna cast to a T because we can't say we can't do this, right? We can just do object and just cast it into a generic type. So we can do T new object default size. Okay, so this array is gonna hold the default size of 10 and this dot size equal to zero. So that's the initial size. Okay. And now we're going to have a getter and setter for the size. So we're going to do, so we're going to have getters and setters for the size. And if you guys don't know how to know, don't know how to do this, then it's really easy. All you have to do is press Alt Shift S and then R just like that. And you get this menu right here. You can click OK and you have the getters and setters for the size. And we're going to have another set method that just sets whatever index we want to the type of object that we want. So we're going to do this. So public void set in index and type t. And we're going to say array at index is equal to t. Okay, so it's a pretty uh, simple set method here. And now we're going to work on our add method. So our add method is going to be recursive. Okay. So we're going to say add public void add and it's going to take an index and it's going to take a specific type of element. Okay. And now we want to check the validity of the index. So if the index is less than zero, so if index is less than zero or index is greater than get size we're going to throw an exception. So throw new index out bound exception. So that's for the index. And now we're going to assume for the first case, we're going to assume that there's available space in the array. So we're going to say assume available space. So we're going to say, you know, if, if index is equal to zero, or the index is equal to get size then we're going to set we're going to use the set method that we use, that we made here right so we're going to use this set method to set the index to the type t so we're going to do set index and t so that's if there's available space else and this is where recursion starts. We're going to make another method called shift towards end. So this method just takes an element and shift all elements to the end to make available room for the new element in our array. So it's going to call, be like this. So private void shift towards towards end. Okay. So we're going to have this method takes two indexes, one called index and one called current. Okay. And what we're going to do say if current is greater than or equal to index, then array at current plus one is equal to array at current. And what this does is basically shift each element to the end. Okay, starting from this current element and the index element that we have. And then we're going to call the method recursively until the current is less than or equal to the index. So this if statement no longer works. 
So we're going to say the following. Shift towards end and current minus 1. So it's going to decrease the current each time we call this method. So at one point, it's going to shift all the elements towards the end and add our new element. So else we're going to call shift towards end index and we're going to use get size minus one so we're going to start from the last element in the list okay and do this method recursively then again we want to set the index at the end when this happens okay when this ends after we finish everything we want to increase the size of the list so we're going to do this so this dot set size get size plus one okay so we increase the size by one each time we add a new element so that's for the add method now for the remove so let's discuss this one so public t remove we want to return the deleted element so that's why i call it t and index all right and then i'm gonna say t result is equal to array at index all right so that's that one and now i'm going to have my recursive method called shift towards start so this is the opposite of the other one so it's private void shift towards start and this is going to take our current element or current index actually and i'm going to say here array at current minus one is equal to array at current so pretty much shift every element to the start until we reach that current and then i'm going to say if current is equal to get size minus one so if it's equal to the last element in the array what i'm going to do is just delete that element so i don't have to do anything basically so i'm just going to say array at current is equal to uh, actually I can just set right yeah I can just do set in fact current and I'm just gonna do null okay so we're gonna use that method so we're setting the last element to be null if you want to delete it else I'm just gonna do this so shift towards start and current plus one okay so I'm just gonna keep increasing the current and here I'm just gonna say this I'm going to say shift towards start index plus one and then here I'm just going to say reduce the size of the list so I'm this dot set size get size minus one okay so reduce the size and we just have to return the result now all right so that's for a remove method now for our two string method I'm going to have the following. So I'm going to have public string to string. All right. I'm going to have a string builder because we want to keep appending elements. All right. I'm going to say sb.append. And we're going to start with a square bracket. So that's the first start to our element. And again, I'm going to make you recursive to string right so I'm gonna say private void to string that receives an index and it receives a string builder and I'm gonna use this later on in my original method and then I'm gonna say if index is less than get size minus one so if it's less than the last element then what we're gonna do is just simply keep appending that element at the index so just keep appending the items okay so I'm gonna do it this way sb dot append array at index plus you know plus just a comma right so that's how we wanna uh, concatenate the elements we want to separate them with a comma so it's gonna have this element here at the index and separated by comma if we're not at the end of the list that's what we're basically saying and then call the method recursively so to string to string index plus one 
as B. Okay, so just keep calling recursively. Then we're going to say else if. So if we are at the last element of the list, what we want to do is, so else if index is less than get size. So basically, if we're at the last element of the list, we just want to append that element without any comma because that's the last element. So sb.append array at index. Okay, so that's our last element. And that's pretty much it for our two string method here. And we're going to use that in this one. So sb, or actually two string, my bad. We're going to start from index 0 and append sb to it, the one we just instantiated here. And then when we finish our string, we're going to say sb.append the other square bracket, right? So the ending square bracket. And then we're going to store everything in a result, or you can just return sb.toString. Uh, I prefer to store it in s, so string s equals sb.toString and return s. So that's it for our toString method. Um, that's it for our array list, actually. That's all we need. We just need the add method, the remove method, and of course the, the toString method. Now for the add and remove, um, and the two string actually depending when you add or remove if we're adding to the end of the list then our running time is actually o at n so we have a big o of n same thing with the remove uh no sorry o at one my bad if you're removing at the end of the list if you're adding to the beginning or the end or the middle of the list uh then in that case is going to be o at n because it depends on the number of items in your list same thing with the two string. The two string has to check every single item individually so it can concatenate them with the commas. And so therefore, the big O is O at N for two string. So that's pretty much it for our array list. It's not as complicated as the link list was. Uh, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have a question, just comment. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, you can do or you cannot. Up to you. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time and uh, thanks for watching.